to the Old Testament book of Psalms. Psalms chapter 103 is where we will find our opening text this morning. How many are thankful for the Word of God today? Amen. Aren't you thankful for the Word? We're reading here today from the New King James Version. We'll begin reading at verse number 8. It says, The Lord is merciful and gracious. He's slow to anger and abounding in mercy. He will not always strive with us, nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins. How many are thankful you serve a God who's not dealt with you according to your sins? (laughs) Woo, thank you, Jesus. That's a good place to shout right there. Nor has he punished us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As a father pities his children, so the Lord pities those who fear him. For he knows our frame. He remembers that we are dust. Before we give you the title of today's message, I want us to look at a couple of more scriptures here. And first of all, I want us to look at Matthew chapter 7. Here in Matthew chapter 7, we find Jesus speaking here in verse number 11. This is one of my favorite passages of scripture. He says, if you then being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, and that's referring to us human parents, how much more, everybody say how much more, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? And then finally, Jesus says these words over here in John 3.16, passage that we all know so well and we love so dearly. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. The title of our message this morning is this, The Father Heart of God. The Father Heart of God. How many know today that we serve a God who knows how to be everything to us in every moment of our lives? Whether it be a father, a mother, a spouse, a source of encouragement, a source of strength, a place of healing, a time of refreshing. How many know Jesus knows, he's everything to us. The Bible says it like this, he's an ever-present help. In the time of need. Amen. How many are thankful for your heavenly father this morning? And so I believe here today. As we are earthly fathers. Earthly mothers. Earthly parents. I believe it is in our best interest to emulate the heart of our heavenly father. So here on this Father's Day 2024, I want us to look to the Word of God to see what the heart of our Heavenly Father really looks like. We start here today in Ephesians chapter 5 as the Apostle Paul addresses the church at Ephesus. And he says this in verse number 25. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church. And how much did he love the church? And gave himself for her. That he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word. That he might present her to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. Here in Ephesians we see Jesus the Christ, the Son of God, the King of glory, the Ancient of Days, 
the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star, the Lamb of God, and even our Heavenly Father. We see Him loving the church. We see Him giving His life for the church. He loved us so much that He endured the cross. Can somebody say, thank God for the cross of Calvary? Wow, what an amazing Heavenly Father we have. And so what that speaks to us here today is this. It's the fact that love motivates us to action. For God so loved the world that he did what? He gave. Love motivates us to action. In other words, we could say it like this. Love is a verb. Anybody remember way back to school? What does verb mean? Verb is an action word, right? Love is a verb. And not only does love motivate us to action, but love actually motivates us to do what is right. Paul, speaking to the church at Rome, he says this in Romans chapter 2, verse 4. Or do you despise the riches of his goodness, his forbearance, and his long-suffering? Not knowing that the what? The goodness of God leads you to repentance. Notice the wording here that Paul uses to describe the characteristics of our Heavenly Father. Paul details his goodness, his forbearance, and his long-suffering. And then Peter says it like this over in 2 Peter chapter 3. He says, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise. How many know we have some promises from our heavenly father? How many know we have an inheritance from our heavenly father? The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness. But he is long-suffering. In other words, he's patient. He's long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So then, as children of God, who have been adopted into the family of God, we now live our lives in the kingdom of God. Anybody thankful that you're a child of God today? Aren't you thankful that we've been grafted into the vine? But as we live our lives now in the kingdom of God, we begin to learn some things about our Heavenly Father. How many children here today remember living at home and learning some things about mom and dad? Hello? We learned some things by observation, didn't we, about our parents? Sometimes we learned what to do. Sometimes we learn what not to do. But as children of God who have been adopted into the family of God, we now live our lives in the kingdom of God. And as we do that, we learn some things about our Heavenly Father. We might not realize it, but we've all learned some things about the heart of our Heavenly Father. If you have been saved for any time at all, you've already learned some things about your Heavenly Father. As we watch our Heavenly Father, we learn what is important to Him. We learn what moves His heart. We also learn what grieves Him How many have ever grieved the heart of your Heavenly Father? I hate to say that, but we all have, haven't we? We learn things about our fathers. But what we learn about our Heavenly Father, His characteristics, His likenesses, those are the things that we are to emulate or imitate. 
I, I just want to quickly share with you some of the things that I have learned personally about my Heavenly Father. Aren't you thankful that you can call Him your, him your Heavenly Father? I mean, I, I'm thankful that He's your Heavenly Father, but I'm real thankful that He's my Heavenly Father. <laughs> right? But I, I, I've learned some things about Abba Father. I, I've learned that he has a long fuse. How many know that God is so patient with us? Aren't you thankful for God's patience? Aren't you thankful he doesn't throw the clay away? I've learned that he has a short memory. I can really mess up. I mean, I can really mess up. But if I repent... And if I come to him, how many know it's covered? It's as far as the east is from the west, and he doesn't remember it no more. My heavenly father, he has a long fuse. He has a short memory. And another thing he has, he has really thick skin. Remember when we used to say that? Oh, they got thick skin. They could take some things. They can endure some things. They can be faithful. How many know we serve a faithful God this morning? Yeah, my Heavenly Father, He has a long fuse. He has a short memory. He has thick skin. And you know what else He has? He has a really big heart. <laughs> he has a really big heart. The love of God is so amazing. That once you really begin to encounter the love of God, once you really begin to understand the love of God, you can't help but not only receive that love, but then you begin to love Him in return. How many are thankful for the love of God this morning? So yeah, my Heavenly Father, He has a long fuse, He has a short memory, He has thick skin, He has a big heart. And can I say, Ben, all these characteristics are things that you and I need here today in this life. The things that we see in our Heavenly Father, we need to emulate them here on earth. How many here today want to be a good partner to your spouse? Do you want to be a good partner to your spouse? Do you want to be a good parent to your children? How many just want to be a good person overall, right? Good character, good integrity. And if you don't, be, if you don't want to be good, I don't think we can really help you here today. <laughs> but if you want to be better, then how many know we can do that together? We do that as the body of Christ. We learn and we grow together. Where we go together. To God, where we go in God, we must go together. We go as a body. And so, yeah, I think we all want to be better, do better. That's one of the reasons why we're here today. But one of the things I've learned about Bible salvation, and one of the things I've learned about this process of sanctification is the fact that I can never be good enough. If Steve could be good enough for himself, then how many know Jesus' death on the cross was in vain? The very fact that I can't be good enough for myself is why Jesus came. How many know Jesus came to seek and to save those who were lost? How many know we're all sinners in need of a Savior? For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I see so many things in my Heavenly Father that I want to see in myself. But sometimes I fall short. Sometimes I struggle. But how many are pressing towards the mark? Amen. Amen. Now, one of the things that I've learned about my Heavenly Father and His heart is the fact that if I really 
do want to do better, if I really want to change, if I really want to be more like Jesus, then guess what? The Word of God and the power of the Holy Spirit can help me to do just that. Look at your neighbor this morning. Remind him, we really can change. We really can do better, can't we? Through the Word of God, by the power of the Holy Spirit, by the transformation that takes place in our lives, by the work of the Holy Spirit, this process of sanctification, it really does work. I like to say it like this. What I can't do for myself, God can and will. So many times I'm, I, I'm faced with situation and circumstances and I'm sorry, but I don't have the answers. And I don't know where to turn. But how many are thankful we serve a God who knows all, sees all, hears all, has the answer to all? We've just got to stop. We've got to ask. We've got to listen. We've got to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. And yes, my Heavenly Father will help me to change, but I must desire that change. You see, the way we become a new creation is by taking off the old man and putting on the new. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things have become new. You know, it's, it's interesting being a parent, isn't it? How many parents do we have here today? It's interesting being a parent. I think Pastor Jared alluded to this already. Oftentimes when we look at our children, when we look at their actions and demeanors and even desires, oftentimes we see ourselves. And sometimes we think that's good, and sometimes we think that's not so good. But being a parent is amazing. It's, it's an unbelievable responsibility. It's a great privilege. Because nobody looks to us like our children do. Have you noticed that? Especially when they're young. Especially when they're at home growing up. Nobody looks to us like our kids. As earthly parents, I want us to know here today that there's a helper. If you have children at home and sometimes you feel overwhelmed, how many remember when you had two or three kids at home and they were like all in diapers or all in that terrible two or growing up, maybe getting the teeth, whatever they were doing? And it seemed like those seasons of our lives would last forever, didn't they? But how many know seasons don't come to last? They come to pass. And this too shall pass. But I, re I want to remind you here today, if you were a parent, especially if you have kids still at home, you have a helper. You have a guide. You have an example. And yeah, his name is Jesus. And you see, as, even as earthly parents, we can hold fast to the promises of God. Anybody thankful for the promises of God here today? Has the Lord ever gave you a promise about anything? The Bible tells us this, the promises of God, they are yea and amen. And you see, as children of God, as earthly parents, we need to find some promises of God that pertain to our situation. And the reason we do that is found here in Numbers chapter 23, verse 19. It says, God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent. Has he said, and will he not do? Or has he spoken, and will he not make it good? David went on to say this in Psalms 138, verse number 2. He says, I will worship 
toward your holy temple. And praise your name for your loving kindness and for your truth. For you have, watched this now, for you have magnified your word above all your name. Wow. What a powerful statement here by David. For you have magnified your word above all your name. Now it's important to note here that his name which God gave Jesus a name that was above every name, right? But his name means his reputation. His name represents his character, who he is, his faithfulness, his goodness, and all of those other great things about him. That's his name. But his word, everybody say his word. His word is his promise. His word is his surety. His word is his bond. His word represents the covenant between God and man. Anybody thankful for the word of God this morning? The word of God will stand when everything else is on fire. The word. And in that future day, a fulfillment, when all his word will be accomplished, not only in the earth, but in the heavens, and even in our lives. But in that future day of fulfillment, when all of his word will be accomplished, his performance will exceed His promise. Therefore, magnifying his word above his name. And every promise that was ever spoken, every promise that was ever heard and received will be fulfilled in the life of the believer. Anybody thankful for the word of God today? Look at your neighbor and tell him, I can make it because I got a promise. I got a word. That's how I can keep going. And that, my friend, is why we need to know firsthand what the word of God says about our particular situation. I'm thankful for emotions. I'm, I'm thankful that we, the fact that we serve a God that we can feel. I'm thankful that everything that we experience in this salvation experience. But how many know the word is forever settled in heaven? And I hate to say this, but there's some days that I don't feel it. Any humans here today? Some days I wake up and I don't really feel saved. Really don't feel God. Really don't feel his presence. But it's times like those where we don't walk by sight. We don't walk by our emotions, but we walk how? By faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. And that's why the Word of God must be our foundation. Everything we do in life, especially as a Christian, it's got to be judged against the Word. How does this relate to the word? What does the word say about this? So every situation that we go through in life, every hardship, every test, every trial, we need a word. We need a promise. And thank God because as parents, as human parents, I rejoice in the fact that there are great and precious promises throughout the Word of God. Not only is God for us, but how many know He is Christ in us, the hope of glory? Not only can we do all things through Christ, 
who strengthens us. But how many know he is an ever-present help in the time of need? How many remember when you were, the kids were at home, and that little baby had a fever, raging fever in the middle of the night? Or maybe they were crying and wouldn't stop crying, and you didn't know why, and you would just call out on the name of the Lord. He's an ever-present help in the time of need. Oftentimes we go through things in this life as children of God. And we cry out, don't we? We cry just like our children would cry. God, you got to help me, Jesus. Woo! How many are thankful he never turns a deaf ear to our cry? So no matter what we're going through in life, whether it be fatherhood, motherhood, parenthood, it doesn't matter what the stress is. There's a word. There's a promise. There's an answer. And Jesus has that answer. I'm reminded of this passage here in Proverbs chapter 22. Verse number 6, and it says, Proverbs 22, 6. And and notice it doesn't say raise up a child, but it says train up a child. Just like Pastor Jared said, there's a lot of dads out there, but not very many true fathers. We can raise children, but how many know we are to train them in the things of God? And I'm just going to go ahead and say this while we're here. It's not the church's responsibility. Mm-mm. Not the pastor, not the Sunday school department, not the youth group, not the... Uh-uh. It's ours as parents. Raise up a child in the way he should go. And when he is what? Old. So that means it might not be right away. It, it, it might be a case of like the prodigal son where they go out and do their thing for a while. How many have some prodigal sons and daughters that you're believing God for? Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he's old, he will not depart from it. That's a promise. Everybody say, that's a promise. That's a promise. When we have sons and daughters that are away from God, we can hang on to that promise right there. Our last scripture here, praise team, you can come. Psalms chapter 127. It's a very familiar passage of scripture, and I thought it would be befitting here today on this Father's Day. You know, oftentimes in our world, we look at children as a burden. We look at them as not being a blessing. And I even hate to mention it that we abort how many children. But look what the Word of God says about our children. It says, behold, children are a what? Heritage. In other words, they're important. They're to be loved. They're to be respected. They're to be cared for. They're to be cherished. Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior, so are the children of one's youth. Happy is the man who has his quiver full of them. Wow. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with their enemies in the gate. Moms and dads, can I remind us here today 
that our children are not a burden. They're not a pain. And I know, I understand we all go through those growing pains as parents. And how many of sometimes it can get rough, especially when you have a, a bunch of little ones at home. But how many know God will help us to be the parent that we need to be? Hello? God will help us. He'll give us the strength. He'll give us the grace. He'll give us the mercy. He'll give us the patience. Why? Because those are His characteristics. And how many know we have His DNA living on the inside of us? As His heavenly children, those Great characteristics can come down into us. No, that doesn't happen overnight. We don't become the perfect dad or the perfect mom overnight. Can I say it like this? We don't become the perfect husband or the perfect wife overnight. Hello, come on, somebody help me right here. But God... In his grace and his mercy. The fact that he doesn't give up on us. The fact that he doesn't throw the, the clay away. But that he keeps molding and making us. And see what that shows us is, it, it, guess what? If he doesn't give up on us, then we shouldn't give up on our children. Hello? Does that make sense? It's on days like this that I stop and think about the fact that I'm a father myself, three beautiful children, beautiful daughter-in-law. And I think about the times that I messed up as a father. And I think if I could just go back, I could change some things. And I would do some things different. But aren't you thankful for the love of the Father? That in spite of our failures, in spite of our weaknesses, He loves us so much. I have been thinking and praying about a message. And you know how it works for me. You've heard, you've heard me say this before. I get the title to my messages and then I have to work for everything else. Get the scriptures together and the meat of the message but I have this message in mind, but I, I, I keep going back and forth on really exactly what God wants me to say in all of it. But the title of the message is this. If I knew then what I know now. That makes sense to anybody? If I knew then what I know now. And as I was thinking about this, praying about this, I was thinking, you know, I'm, I'm going to talk about all the things that I've learned and how I've grown in, in the Lord. And then the Lord just reminded me of something. Now he just began to drop this into my spirit. He said, Steve, sometimes you've got to make mistakes. Sometimes you got to do it the wrong way so you learn how just important the right way really is. And can I tell you, there is nothing wasted in our lives. There's nothing wasted in the kingdom of God. God uses it all. The good, the bad, and the ugly. There's nothing wasted. Stand with me if you would, please. We're going to ask all of our fathers to come forward if you would, please. Men, husbands, 
Fathers, we thank you today for everything that you've done.